Hello everyone, so today we're going to be talking about the Raspberry Pi as well as this circuit. So we're going to go over the circuit, how it all works, what it is, and then we're also mostly going to be going over the code and how to start programming with the Raspberry Pi and using the GPIO pins. So this thing here is, well, from inside a mouse. And what we're using is this, which is basically this little button. Um, this is another button. And we pop this cover off and we're connecting um, them together. So it's like uh, we're pushing a button when this relay gets activated. There's a electromagnet inside this and we power that with a five volt uh, coming from here. And that connects to um, ends together, and that basically shorts this out, and that'll count as a click. So we have this getting turned on and off by this transistor over here, and this transistor, how that works is once there's a voltage to the center pin, because there's three pins coming out of this, uh, when a voltage is applied to the center pin, it connects the left and right pin together basically. So we have this ground going to the right pin, and then we have the left pin going to the relay. And once we apply a voltage to the second pin through our programmable pin, it will allow current to flow through, activating the relay. So how do we get uh, voltage through this uh, GPIO pin? Well, we'll look at the code in a second to figure that out. And the three resistors, why are there three resistors? Well, the GPIO pin is kind of always high. Even though you can set it low, there's always a little bit of voltage coming through. And even if there's a little bit of voltage, uh, this transistor will be on and it will hold down. So, but we want it to click. So I have three resistors there. And the reason for three is mainly because I didn't actually have the right resistor that I needed. So I found three resistors that made the right resistance that was uh, compatible with this transistor here. So if you look at this circuit, you might have noticed something. I don't really need this uh, relay. If I don't have it and I have this transistor here, all I really need to do is apply a voltage to the center and then it shorts this together, making a click. So why was I using the relay then? Well, I was using the relay mostly because of the clicking noise it makes. So when you have a mouse and you push the button, it makes a clicking noise, and that's what the relay does. So it makes it an audible noise that you can hear. Normally, it would be completely silent without this. So that's why I have the relay, plus kind of looks cool. So let's go take a look at the code now. Here it is. So we're going to look at it line by line to understand it a little bit better. So import rpi.gpio. So that's import raspberry pi.gpio, which just gives us all the files that we need to make sure that the computer understands how to use the GPIO pins. The next one here is import time, and that we're going to use later on in the video. Um, it'll help us with the main part of our code. The next one here uh, below that says relay pin equals 11. So here, we have this little chart and it says J8 at the top, which if you have your Raspberry Pi, it has a little J8. So look for that and then you know which orientation it needs to be in. But if we look at ours, we see that we have this yellow wire connected to the GPIO 17 pin. And over here, we see that GPIO 17 is equal to 11. So it's the 11th pin. So Relay pin equals 11 just means that we're using the 11th pin. And the reason why we use relay pin is you can choose it yourself and really make it whatever you want. I chose relay pin because it's very descriptive. You're not going to mess up relay pin with something else, you know. If you use X or Y, you could easily mess that up. So our next function here is um, def setup. So def means it's a function. So in there we have this code. So the first line here says GPIO set mode GPIO dot board. And basically that just tells the computer that we're gonna be using the GPIO board on the Raspberry Pi. And now the next one says GPIO setup relay pin GPIO out. And all that's doing is really telling us that the relay pin, which is pin 11, is going to be an output pin, meaning we're gonna have a voltage going out instead of a voltage coming in. 
The next one says that the GPIO output relay pin uh, GPIO low, meaning we're setting it to low. And that's going to be done during setup, so it's not high and activating all of our electronic components that we have. So after that, we have the loop uh, function, and we have a well true statement. And that means that it's going to be looping through this basically forever, and it's never really going to stop. So while true, there are ways to stop it, like just hitting stop at the top there, but uh, we also can have a interruption, which we'll get into in a minute. So first we set it to low, meaning that it's off and it's not pushed. Then we sleep for one second, so that means it's not pushed, and then we wait a second, and then we push it. And GPIO.high means there's a voltage going through that pin, and that's a relay pin. So the voltage is going through the transistor, which turns it on and basically connects the right and left pins together. That, then we sleep for a very short time, and we only need to sh sleep for a short time because that you don't need a long time for a click. And then we have a counter which tells us how many times it has been clicked. Next we have this part down here, and this is really optional. You don't need this in your code, but it's just something that makes it easier to use and understand. So we have a function called destroy, which has a GPIO cleanup. And what that does is it basically resets all the pins um, and our pin to low. And then down here, it prints saying starting program when the program starts. And that just lets us know that it is working and there wasn't an error. And then below that, we have an exception, a keyboard interruption. So if there's a keyboard interruption, um, that means we'll call on the function destroy, and as we said before, the destroy function has the cleanup, and the cleanup just resets all of the pins. So now we are going to go to the online click counter and use that like we used in the short before. So this time, um, we're just going to show it off again, and we'll hit run here, but now we have to get over there without clicking anything else, so let's go. Hey, there we go. So now, every time in the bottom right that it says pushed, for that 0 0.05 seconds, we have an increase in the click counter. So this project really kind of gets you introduced to all the different um, mandatory things that need to be used in your code when you're using the GPIO pins. And it's a good place to start. Um, really, you could do anything, like just making a light flick on and off, but I think this is more fun. So if you guys like this video, make sure to like and subscribe and check out my other videos.